I decided to make a book nut based on this sketch. To start, I sketched what I wanted the diorama to look like from the top and from the side. Since I already had a painting for a reference, this didn't take very long. To make the base, I cut out three pieces of cardboard, making each one slightly shorter than the last, and glued them together so I would have a shallow cavity for the pond. Next, we need to carve the hills out of XPS foam. I drew the shape I wanted and then carved it out with an X-Acto knife, which took ages. We have one big hill for the front and a little hill for the back. This is how it's looking so far. Obviously, it just looks like foam glued to cardboard. So the next step is to cover it with clay. And this is when I can get the exact shape I want. I like to add quite a bit of water to my clay for things like this because it makes it easier to not bulk up the hills too much and makes it stick. Now we have to actually make the hobbit holes. So I made a facade, a door, a tiny pillar, another tiny pillar, and a roof. Now to sculpt the smaller hill. Time to paint! <laughs> this was so much less satisfying than I expected. The paint did not want to paint smoothly. You may be thinking this looks like it was painted by a three-year-old, but just wait till I add the grass. I also painted the riverbed brown. Next, we need to make a gravel texture on the path, so I mixed Woodland Scenics plaster, Mod Podge, paint, and obviously water, and painted this on the path. I got the colour wrong, so I had to tweak it a bit. Hobbits don't have boring coloured doors, so I painted the door bright red and then added some dark red, some light red and some more dark red. We're now up to the best part, fake foliage. First I glued some dirt onto the riverbed using Mod Podge. This will help the riverbed look a bit more realistic once I've added the water. Then I unmowed the lawn. I don't have a static grass applicator, which makes all the grass stand up, but I decided to buy a static grass applicator for this. Because I just had to sprinkle the grass on and then tip it upside down and tap it a couple times, the hills ended up looking a bit bald. For making trees, I used dead hydrangea flowers. When the flowers die, the stems dry up and look like trees. I cut a bit off to make a little tree and then glued some clump foliage on. So, we have a lake, but lake needs water. I don't use resin, so I have this stuff called Realistic Water, trademark. Very creative name, from Woodland Scenics. You just pour it in and it dries in 24 hours. And as you can see, I kind of made a mess and overfilled it. Now for the boring bit, making the box our diorama is going in. I measured out how big each piece needed to be and then cut them out. This is definitely the most boring part in making a book nook because it takes ages. Time to paint the backdrop. I stuck a piece of paper in the back to avoid seeing the corners of the box and then began to paint. Also, I accidentally filmed this vertically, so yeah. I guess that's what I get for filming only vertical videos for like a year. Anyway. I started by painting the sky blue, but one mistake I made in my last hobbit hole was to make the sky way too blue, which makes the sky look dark, which is not what the sky looks like. By instead painting it a mega pale blue, it looks like there's more light in the sky, which makes it look like an actual sky. The trick to making the diorama blend seamlessly with the box is to actually make it seamless. So I painted the hills to look like they keep going past where it actually ends. There's also one other trick to make it look like a real little world, which I'll tell you at the end. Once it was painted, I used some static grass and glue to hide the seams between the hills and the box. So this is our book nook. One problem though, we can't actually see it. So I bought these, and these, and this, and these, and these, and this. All of this stuff is to do my own custom wiring and lighting for this book nook. 
In the past I've used fairy lights, but the problem with fairy lights is that they're only one colour and they have batteries which run out after only a day or so. So I decided why not try breadboarding. A breadboard is an easy alternative to soldering. Basically it keeps everything neat and organised and is much safer than using soldering. So I decided to try it. This is starting to sound like an ad. Hello, hello? Ah, no, no. Hello. Okay, okay. Obviously, I'm still a beginner and I'm not very good at it yet, but I'll link the videos I used to learn in the description. As I said, there is one mega important step if you want your book knock to look like it actually goes on forever. It may sound simple, but all you need to do is add a really chunky frame. You may be thinking, what's the point of that? Because then it just covers up most of the diorama I just spent like two weeks making. And I would say, yes, that's the point. When you cover up the edges of the book nook, you can't see it all at once and have to move your head around to see it all. So it makes it look like it really does go on forever. This is how my book nook, my book nook looked before I added the frame. I was actually really disappointed, but once I added the frame, the result was mind bending. Okay, bye!